Welcome back everybody. We are going to be looking at defining uh, functions in Python today. So Python already has certain functions built into it. So uh, like the print function, for example, you can use that to display text or the input function, which you can use to allow you to type something in. Um, however, we can also define our own functions, which um, we can then call within a program to do uh, whatever we want, really. So let's just start off by really how we go about doing this. So I type in def, short for define, and then I give my function a name, something like this. Some empty brackets to start, but I'll go through um, you know, what can go in those brackets later on. And then print. So what I'm saying here it's pretty pretty straightforward for most of you guys. Um, I'm going to print I love coding a hundred times, and um, I've created this function called repeat uh, 100, um, which will run this function. So if I run it, you'll see nothing happens because I didn't call the function yet. So just like um, you know, uh, with like a print function, in order to use it, I need to actually call it. So if I call it now. So all I do to call it is I just write the name of it. And again, in this case, I need to do empty brackets, but that can change later on. I'll explain how that works in a minute. So now that I've actually um, run the, uh, now that I've run the program, you can see that it's, uh, it's just printed I love coding a hundred times. So why would we need something like this? Well, we define functions in Python so that we don't have to repeat big chunks of code over and over again. So if you have something like um, a um, loot table type system, if you were making maybe an adventure time, uh, adventure game, every time you went into that loot table, you could create a function which automatically checked the loot table for you so that every time you needed to check that loot table, you didn't need to write the whole thing again. You could just call the loot check function or something like that and it would just check it for you automatically. So it's just a way of being as efficient as we can in coding. And when it comes to um, GCC coding, uh, one of the actual areas that you're marked on is your efficiency. So making sure you don't repeat a lot of code and using um, defined functions when you can will mean that your code is more efficient. So I'm going to show you um, another example here uh, where it can get um, just a slightly more complicated. So outside of any function, I'm just going to put an input statement. And this input statement will accept a number. And I'm just going to say what So I'm just saying, what time tables would you like to know? So whatever number here, obviously we can put other checks on here and that kind of stuff, but whatever number that the user has put in, we're going to put that into n. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to define a times table function. So def times table. Now, this is slightly different to the first def, uh, defined function. The first defined function had nothing in the brackets at the end of it. However, this function has the n in it. And basically, whatever you want to take with you into the function, you put in these brackets. So I'm saying here that I want to take this n into the times table function. So I need to put it within those brackets, basically. Now what I'm going to do is a quick for loop, for loop in range. And if you don't know how to do one of those you, or what that is, you may have to look at the old for loop video, which is on the channel. So I'm just saying here, um, just repeat this 10 times. Answer equals n times loop. Okay, so I need to call this function again. So again, just quickly what I'm saying here is that um, my answer variable equals um, n, which is the number that they have selected, and the number I've carried into the function, um, times loop, whichever point I'm up to at my loop, um, 0 to 10, uh, and then it will just print the answer out for me there. So now if I call the function, so times table, then brackets, I also need to tell the program that, okay, you need to carry n with you 
through to um, through to this part of the program. So if I run this, okay, what time stable would you like to know? Slightly like ten times stable, and it does that automatically for me. So now every time, say oh, I had a um, I had a program and I wanted um, people to have the ability to um, do multiple times tables. So maybe they want to do this a few times without. Um, you know, without repeating the code over and over, oh, I would need to do the input statement again. Oh, well, it's, it's run it three times there. But what I could do is I could put the input statement within this times table thing, and I could, there's a lot of things I could do differently here. But what I'm basically saying is that using define and defining my own functions makes my programs more efficient because it means that I don't need to rewrite lots of code. I can just take blocks of code that I know I'm going to use, put them within a definition, give them a name, and then just call that name whenever I need it to happen. So I hope that's been useful. That's a sort of a rough guide, a starting sort of points to definitions there. And um, obviously they can get a little bit more complicated, but that's, that's there or thereabouts. If I want to carry on, uh, carry in uh, more than one variable into this, I could just put them in here. So I'll just do x equals and then whatever from there. And then when I called it here, I would do the same again. So your definition can take as many variables as you want, but make sure when you call it, this and this match. So I hope you have found that interesting and I hope you found that useful. If you have any comments, questions, anything that you'd like, maybe you'd like to know a little bit more about definitions or another video going into it in more detail, um, put a comment uh, below or something and then I can see what I can do with that. So thank you for listening and I hope you did get something from that.